Hello again, my friends. It's Ray over at Cigar Climatology. Um, today, I think what we are going to do is uh, we are going to enjoy a uh, Hoyo de Monterey, the Hoyo de Roy. These are really, really a perennial favorite of mine. It's really just a shame that a cigar so excellent has been discontinued. Obviously, likely Hoyos, what's left of them, uh, cabinet box, cabinet packaging, that's wonderful. And, um, well, I've really enjoyed these because I know a lot of you guys like your really dark, shiny wrappers. Uh, but those don't do much for me. Of course, to me, I'm, I'm not real picky about wrappers in the first place. Um, yeah, these are, these are on the dull side. There's no doubt about that. But they are a, uh, definitely a light Colorado. Not quite a Claro color. But, um, oh, I just love these scars. And the, the bouquet of this entire box is just permeating my shop. Except this one's got a little wrapper damage in it. But this one's really good and hard. So I think that's going to be uh, the victim for tonight. So, uh, like I said, tonight is the uh, Hoyo de Monterey. Uh, Le Hoyo series. And um, it is the Duroy. These are SUA. E&E e 01s. I have an affinity for 01 cigars. I know a lot of people don't like them or stay away from them because they think they're plugged. Well, I guess if you keep them right, you don't have too many issues with plug cigars. That's my philosophy anyway. So all this good stuff goes back in the box. And the box go back in the humidor. And uh, we'll get started. Thanks for joining me. Hello, my friends. Ray again over at Cigar Climatology. Um, the place that I have uh, lovingly termed uh, the Grimpen Meyer. Amidst my uh, junk, plastics, controls, etc., trying to put some uh, parts together for some people. Um, I did uh, have a box shot there earlier of uh, the cigar that we're going to be smoking today. And um, that is the Hoyo de Monterey du Roy. Uh, this is, of course, a part of the, the uh, Le Hoyo series, uh, which have always been uh, pretty much my favorite uh, Hoyo de Monterey cigars. Um, this is no exception. Unfortunately, this cigar is no longer made. Uh, this is out of a box of 01 cigars. So rather than uh, go on and on about it too much, I think we should just light it up and get it started. Um, the cigar is somewhat crude looking. Uh, of course it is a uh, cabinet selection cigar, which means it was tied with a band. It's a little crooked. And uh, it's kind of a dull, light uh, Colorado coloring. It smells great. Like I said, construction-wise, at least from appearance, it's uh, it's not really wonderful, but it's it's pretty stout. It's going to be a good stiff drawing cigar, and I always like that, as you know. So off with its head. Draw is fantastic. Let's get it lit up. I want to get this started because I got to get back to work. Nothing like being able to smoke a fine cigar while you're working. Mmm, already a good taste. Candy cherry.
slightly tannic, old tannins. Got a little grit. <laughs> Should never be in a hurry to light up. But uh, I haven't had one of these cigars in uh, oh, probably at least about a month. Uh, they've always been a big smoker for me. I still have several boxes of them left, thank goodness. And uh, they've always been wonderful cigars. Still got the tobacco. We gotta clean that up a little bit. Great drawing cigar. Not a lot of smoke. That's fine with me because the cigar tastes fantastic. So what am I experiencing here? Again, the uh, dark cherry, condensed cherry taste. Um, I say candy cherry because it is um, actually moderately sweet. Um, some taste of tannins. Um, like I said, good pronounced sweetness actually. Uh, slightly tannic. No real oils to speak of. Cool smoke. I think that's one of the advantages of a more tightly rolled cigar. Rather than the cigar burning extremely quickly and heating up, at least my experience is that many times they're very cool smoking cigars. And this is no exception. There's literally no heat in my mouth whatsoever from, from the heat of the, uh, of the foot. Um, again, it's like drawing basically cool air versus, uh, versus hot smoke. Um, the cigar is plenty hot down here at the foot, so that's, uh, that's not an issue, but uh, it, uh, it does cool down quite a bit on its way through the cigar. This is actually what I would tend to term a refreshing cigar. And uh, since it is actually fairly early for me, I'm actually still s sipping my morning coffee. I think it'll pair really well with this. While because the cigar seems lighter bodied, it doesn't mean that it's that it's lacking flavor or that the flavor is um, not pronounced or robust. So far, slightly monotonic, simply the cher cherry and the uh, and the slight tannin flavor, but that's okay because I like I said I already know that I'm going to enjoy the cigar. The, literally the first draw off of it when the flame hit the foot, uh, I realized that this was going to be very similar to uh, to many of these that I've smoked in the past. And I'm, I'm just going to get a, uh, a smoking experience, and unless it all goes to hell in a handbasket quickly, very similar to, uh, to cigars in the past. Mm, great. Now a hint of almond and a little bit more complexity just fantastic and actually the finish with the coffee is 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 very good it does not seem to uh, add any coffee flavoring uh, to the cigar I can uh, clearly distinguish between the two but the combination of the two is very good of course uh, I do drink my coffee with uh, with a sweetener in it but with no cream 
and uh, since it's out of a French press, it's uh, with a lot of coffee. My uh, my coffee is fairly strong, basically the same that I I, I like my cigars. I, I like to be able to taste whether it's the coffee or tea or um, or or the cigar or apple juice. I like to be able to taste whatever it is that 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 I'm consuming. The retro hail is nice. A hint of oat. Uh, a, a cereal taste. Again, still sweet. A little less of the of the uh, pitted fruit or the cherry. Uh, the complexity of the cigar is definitely picking up as as the cigar uh, changes a bit in character and taste. Uh, before I terminate this part of the video. Uh, I thought I might add, it's just, it's such a shame that uh, Tabby Cuba has, has decimated the La Jolla line. Uh, I know a lot of folks really, really liked, uh, or really like the, the Du Gourmet, and, um, you know, that's never really been a, a, a perennial favorite of mine. I've, I've smoked some great ones, and I've smoked some not-so-great ones. Mine have always been uh, uh, this cigar, the Du Roy. Uh, the uh, Dauphine has also been a good cigar, but sometimes sketchy. And that, of course, if it just weren't for the deletions of 42 ring and under cigars generally, I, I can see that. The, the Le Hoyo series, to me, has always been an unstable cigar, a cigar that can either surprise you with its greatness or, or highly disappoint you with its lack of performance. Uh, the Duteputé is, uh, is, is another favorite of mine. I've been smoking those uh, for, it seems, uh, decades. Uh, of course, I miss the nice 50 cab boxes we used to be able to get of those. I used to smoke a lot of those. I've, I've actually changed, smoked several of them at a time when I'm just in the mood for the flavor of that cigar and I'm looking for something uh, longer, and I'll just let it let let the first one go out, and go to the next one, let that one go out, and go to the next one. But uh, this cigar has got uh, has got uh, a, a, just a nice body and a nice character. Uh, we'll just have to see how it develops. It's uh, it does not have a real long finish on the palate. That's fine with me. It's it's still early, and uh, I'm not really looking to be. To be mugged down in the humidity with a, you know, with a strong, lasting smoke flavor in my mouth. So I, I think this will do me great. Uh, so that's uh, that's the end of this part. I'm going to go try to clean up some of this uh, stuff here and put together these uh, parts that I need to assemble. And um, I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Thanks for tuning in. Very good. So we're back, I don't know, about 15 minutes later. Um, just been uh, building a heater assembly for uh, one of my clients. And uh, before I get back into the scar, I have to say, there is nothing more maddening than going to the computer and having it say, yes, you have 10 more of those. And of course I don't. So uh, it looks like uh, right after this, I'm making 60 millimeter fan grills again. Um, the cigar. The cigar has moved from that candy cherry profile to more of an oaty cereal profile, which is very nice. The tannins are still there. No pepper in this cigar. Um, but it does have a slightly citric acid taste and feel, which is also uh, which is also good. It's uh, it's really added to the overall complexity of the cigar, which I'm enjoying very much. And while again the cigar has good character, 
the 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 complexity and the the the, the change in the cigar, the character of the cigar, I guess, is what I'm really trying to get out. Very, very, just just a cigar that really kind of demands your attention. And uh, that's one of the things I'm really enjoying about it. Excuse me one second. I actually wish I had less to do and more time to just sit and uh, ponder my cigar, but I'm a little too busy to do that today. Much more smoke than than original. Um, the cigar has opened up, and it's uh, it's quite a bit softer down here, at uh, in close proximity to the uh, to the heated area, to the foot of the cigar. Uh, again, which is fine. This area is actually extremely hot, but uh, the area that I'm touching is uh, is is very pleasant. Um, this portion of the cigar right here is actually reading almost 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It depends really whether you go into the actual portion of the wrapper that's, uh, that's burning. So now that it's quieted in here a little bit, I just had my compressor running a few minutes ago and it's not easy to talk over. Excuse me. Again, the cigar has just dramatically changed. It, it couldn't be further from what it was in the beginning. The taste of fruit is back, this time a dried apple and a hint of cinnamon. Of course, a lot of people associate apple with cinnamon but uh, I do often taste uh, cinnamon and uh, almond in cigars, so that's fairly common for me. Uh, cherry is gone, tannins are gone, hint of sweet is still there, very, very slight though, very slight. Odie still, if I didn't mention that already. And um, again, the personality of the cigar has just been fantastic. It's now lush with smoke, and I can really, really enjoy slowly smoking it. In the beginning, as you recall, there was not really a lot of smoke, but plenty of flavor. Now, as my palate dulls a little bit, the finish is much longer, straight tobacco, no bitter or harshness, but uh, long finish. I, I, I still have it, still have it on my palate. Um, the smoke is heating up a little bit in the cigar as my fingers get a little warmer. Of course, as I've been walking around carrying the cigar through my shop, and uh, you could probably hear my spindle running in the background, warming up my machine, uh, doing some other things. I've probably been a little too active on the cigar, smoking it a little bit too much. I'm not the kind of guy who walks around with a cigar in his mouth. To be honest with you, if I inhale smoke, I'll start to cough. So I don't have, have never been the type that's, uh, that's enjoyed simply dangling a cigar out of my mouth. But when I need my hands, obviously that's where the cigar goes. So I tend to puff at it just to keep smoke out of my face, which is probably warmed up this cigar a little bit more than I than I should have. The good news is that even though I've done that, I haven't ruined the cigar. And that's one of the things I'll probably attribute to storing the cigar more dry in the first place. Again, that's just, uh, I just proffered that. Uh, that's speculation on my behalf. Uh, the cigar has been excellent. 
one of the uh, better cigars that uh, that I've smoked this year. Probably not really up there with uh, the Grande de España that uh, that I smoked last weekend, or a couple of the Diplomaticos that have just been off the charts good. But this cigar has certainly been excellent. Plenty of smoke. A hint of bitter, uh, almost a bitter coffee. Great cigar. Uh, so I'm going to set it down again for a few minutes. I'm going to try and let it rest a little bit. Uh, so far, I have not had to relight. I uh, touched up a bit of. Uh, of of stray wrapper uh, on the foot, but not because the cigar was going out. Again, I just probably smoked it too quickly for the cigar to go out, but I did seem to lose a little bit of wrapper there, so I burned it off. Um, I'll be back in a few minutes, and uh, we'll talk about uh, more developments or uh, the conclusion of the cigar. See you in a few. So before I get into uh, cutting parts, I think what we're going to do is uh, just wrap up this uh, review video. Um, again, nothing better than uh, drawing and making humidor parts while reviewing and enjoying a wonderful cigar. And this has been a wonderful cigar. Just fantastic. This guy might now be getting a little bit uh, past its prime. Um, still some of the taste of apple, mostly now straight tobacco. And the intensity and finish has just grown exponentially. Whereas my palate might begin to get dull generally about at this point. Uh, the finish is extremely long and a hint of bitter. Like I said, this guy might be past its prime at this point in time. And that could be, yeah, I guess it could be due to a lot of things. It's uh, fairly humid uh, today, although I don't uh, ascribe too much to that theory of, of high relative humidity and smoking. Um, overall, a fantastic cigar. If, uh, if you have a chance to uh, acquire any of these, I would certainly recommend uh, that you do it. Uh, despite just being discontinued and hard to get, they were a bargain at one point in time in history because, of course, the uh, Corona size, I do believe these are Coronas anyway, and uh, or the 42 ring size to say the least, and uh, the fact that they were the Hoyos. It's, it's really a shame. These are just simply some of the best cigars in this size that, uh, that I've really ever had. They've just been fantastic. I think I'm going to hang in there a little bit longer with it. The minute I say that, well, it's kind of bitter and strong, I, I, I take a puff, and it's cooler and mellower. Just amazing. Anyway, thanks uh, for joining me here in the shop again today. Thanks for uh, tuning in and watching the uh, review and the video. You guys have a great weekend, and uh, I'll see you online. Adios.